guys just found this article thought it might be interesting to you and uh, for those that you know don't like to read too much that might be a little bit lazy uh, I'll do the reading for you so let's jump right into it so this article uh, is on the wide uh, website it's written by one Mr. Antonio Garcia Martinez what Microsoft antitrust case teaches us about Silicon Valley 20 years after the US tried to break up Microsoft, a new crop of giants ruled technology in an uneasy balance, and the government seems unable to stop them. In the twilight of the 20th century, Bill Gates was well and truly a tentacular squid, with his sucker-covered limbs extending into every level of the computer industry. The one area that Gates didn't dominate, the World Wide Web, and he tried to conquer that newfangled internet, led to an epic battle that continues to shape how the world sees the five-headed beast that big tech has become. Microsoft famously missed the rise of the web in the early 90s, with Gates dedicating only a fraction of his mid-90s tome, The Road Ahead, to the internet. Meanwhile, Netscape introduced millions of, to the pleasures of browsing and surfing, forcing Microsoft to do one of its notorious fast follows i.e. rapid copycat product launches. The company produced Internet Explorer in 1995 and wasted no time in bro-beating and cajoling companies the world over into making it the default web browser on their systems. World of Microsoft's depredations reached the U.S. Department of Justice, which in 1998 sued the company for violating the Sherman Act a vague and archaic law that regulates the ability of conglomerates to assemble monopolies and stifle competition. What's more, the government's lawyers wouldn't just move to penalize Microsoft with fines, they'd seek to break it into smaller companies. The case would last more than five years, and the trial had its share of Perry Mason moments as the wily lead litigator David Boaz arguing on behalf of the DOJ, dueled in cross-examinations with Microsoft witnesses. The most damning evidence submitted at trial, however, was a videotaped deposition of Gates. Unlike robber barons of yore, he wasn't a portly cigar-smoking chieftain. He was a rumpled geek who testified about Microsoft's past practices with an amnesiac level of vagueness and truly Napoleonic persona. This wasn't save-the-world techno-optimism. It was sharp-elbowed libertarianism, and the press coverage of his performance introduced audiences at home to a new character of the digital age, the ruthless tech tycoon. From Gates, it was a short jump to Steve Jobs, infamous distorter of reality fields, Jeff Bezos, slayer of publishing's sickly gazelles, and so many other dark lords with world-warping visions. Microsoft lost the first round in 2001, with the presiding judge ordering the company's breakup. This structural solution, to use antitrust lingo, was later overturned on appeal, largely because under US law, being a monopoly per se isn't illegal. It's typically only when a company abuses that dominance through certain coercion and collusion, among other anti-competitive tactics that raise prices and hurt consumers, that drastic remedies must be taken. Well, drastic remedies in time soon enough will probably be taken then. And the appeals court wasn't convinced that the judge in the first trial applied the correct standards to order a breakup. <laughs> Microsoft and the government decided to cut their losses and reach a settlement with the company agreeing to a series of behavioral remedies that dampened its ability to strong arm others. Microsoft, as Gates, built it would survive, but the message from the government was clear. No one company could dictate the tech industry's playbook. Now, as Gates is off trying to cure malaria and the chorus of complaints against big tech reaches a crescendo, could Bezos and his fellow giants end up in the government's crosshairs? It's unlikely, mostly because the tech world is fundamentally different today than it was in 1998, while U.S. antitrust laws are essentially the same. To use a geopolitical analogy, technology was a unipolar world and Microsoft its lone superpower. The tech world has since become multipolar. Facebook, Amazon, Google, Apple and a reduced Microsoft are near-absolute monarchs of their respective domains. 
No single giant can dominate any other, and one company can coerce another only with great difficulty, if at all. The prospect of Facebook twisting Apple's arm to ship a new iPhone without any social media apps ex except for Facebook's, which is more or less what Microsoft supposedly did to Apple with Explorer, is unthinkable. Today's titans tower over their kingdoms, secure behind their walls of user data and benefiting from extreme network effects that make serious competition from startups nearly impossible. US antitrust laws written in the industrial age don't capture many of the new realities and potential dangers of these vast data empires. Maybe they should. And that was the end of the article, written by Antonio Garcia Martinez. There's a couple of thoughts I'd like to share on this. Because I have read into this before, and I've seen it even on uh, Bill Gates' Wikipedia phase. The bit where it says there's this, this court case, okay? Um, Department of Justice sued the company in the Sherman Act. Um, and it says that, you know, he was being very uh, vague. Yeah, with damning evidence submitted at trial. Um... Here, a rumpled geek who testified about Microsoft's past practices with an amnesic level of vagueness and a truly Napoleonic persona. So I've read this, that the actual judge at the time laughed. He literally chuckled in the court because of the amount of times Bill Gates literally said, I don't know or I don't remember, uh, and how Gates literally tried to argue over the definitions of and context of certain words that were being used. He tried to bend these words around and the meanings... So they didn't have to outright admit guilt. And um, yeah, there was a lot of people actually worked for Microsoft coming forward and, and who were against some of the things that were going on. And uh, like it says here, there was a videotape deposition and there was even things that Bill Gates said he couldn't remember. And he kind of said, I don't think that happened. And then there was like an email, an email release. This is on his Wikipedia. There was an email released showing conversations received by Bill and replied to by Bill. Okay. So he's, he outright lied in the court of law and he's not this cool portly cigar smoking chieftain. He is, uh, you know, this, this, this real, like it says here, he is no save the world techno optimism, which is what we're seeing now from Bill Gates. It's all about save the world. Technology is really going to help everybody. Now it's, you know, it was this sharp elbowed libertarianism. Um, and it showed the audience a new face, you know, the character of the digital age, the ruthless tech tycoon. He's been accused of monopolizing. He's been accused of strong arming. And they, they try to, like they said here, put things in place, behavioral adjustments to stop him from strong arming. Okay. Structural solutions here, which was overturned funny enough. Cause when you're one of the world's richest men uh, at that time, the world's richest man, obviously it wouldn't be so hard to pay off the right people to have these things overturned okay uh because money is power money's bullshit fucking talk, talks and, and money walks or something like that money talks bullshit walks that's the one so you know the facts that you know, these people do have so much money they can overturn certain appeals and they can open up the uh channels to push their agendas through and whatever they want to do that they can outright lie in court and they can outright monopolize and destroy competition for other people, even a chance for competition and strong arm people. Um, and we see this now, you know, and there's, there's nothing people can really do against it except be aware. And that's the thing. We're seeing this now, the same thing, um, exploiting the situation, monopolizing Bill Gates, taking it upon himself to be the world savior and to tell everybody that they cannot move on from the situation until everyone has a vaccine it's the exact same thing that we've seen in the past for things that Bill Gates was held accountable for. And in time, when all of this goes down, if everyone actually gives into this vaccine uh, movement and uh, the World Health Organization acting as a regulatory arm and power over the world, which is exactly what it's already doing now, it's affecting regulation and practices worldwide. And it's continuing more so looking to do more of that to change uh, how things are, you know, operated and, and systems of control. If we allow it to happen, in time, we're just going to see more and more of this ruthless technocrat tycoon uh, buying his way into power through technology, trying to monopolize, trying to ruin the chances for any startups, any smaller business to compete at all. Um, if you want to understand where the future is going, my friends, 
just look to the past that's already been established you know just look at the past and you'll have somewhat idea of uh the future that's being paved anyway this is phoenix thanks for reading uh this with me and um i wish you all the very best in all the times to come much love and light to you bless